Okay, my next question then. What would the 68-year-old Mr. Bachchan have to say to the 26-year-old? Going on 69 year? in a couple of months and next year into 70. Okay, so what would the 70-year-old Mr. Bachchan... more attractive, you know, 70. The 70-year-old Mr. Bachchan have to say to the 25 or 26-year-old Amitabh? Hey, buddy, you're lucky that you reached 68. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a time or a period um, or an era or a decade that you would like to revisit? Which one would it be? Oh, the freedom struggle, for sure. I've, I've been fascinated by that period. I, I, I've grown up in, well, in an unindependent India uh, in 42. So I had about five years, but I was too young. Mm. And you... you all that you could register was what games you played and stuff like that. But I would have loved to have been a part of the freedom movement, you know, made the sacrifice, uh, fought for the country. And that would have been great. If I told you today that you have five days to live, mm -hmm. what would you do? What would be like sort of your bucket list in a sense, you know? Oh dear. I would like to spend it reading uh, my father's works. Because I feel that I have not done justice to them. I haven't had time to, enough time to spend time with him, to understand his philosophy and his, and his thinking about life. He's put it down in his books and in his works. And I pick them up and uh, randomly come across absolute gems, which I try and translate into my life and try and put it into my blog and try to, uh, when I converse with people, I, I, I talk about it. But I wish that I could assimilate all his genius that he put into his works. And does and the meaning spend... of it change as you change? Uh, uh, it, I just find that it becomes very relevant. I used to think that this generation is not interested in literature and poetry, but I was wrong. Every time I put some of his works on, on my blog or on the Twitter, there are fantastic responses. Can we have some more of this? This is beautiful. Uh, I've been doing some of his recitations on stage, um, um, and I was shocked at the kind of interest that people have. Uh, I, I, I was invited to the Krakow University and I recited there. I've done it in Paris. I've done it at Lincoln Center in New York. And now I'm gradually going to smaller towns here. And uh, I was in Bhopal where I was shooting a film. And I did it there for the students. And I just feel that somebody needs to do this because there are people who appreciate it. Well, and I'm very I happy about that. Yes, yes. Now, you've gone from angry young man to angry old man, as they are calling you, and you played the romantic, you played the grandfatherly figure, you played the lover boy, you played everything. Your public persona has gone through all sorts of transformations possible. But has your person to the core remained unchanged, just even to yourself, even not even like to the family, but just who you are inside? Or has that also been yeah, um, transformed yeah, I've through been, the I've, years? I've, I think uh, by nature, I'm a very reticent person. I'm indecisive. That's because I'm a liberal. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I just like to be quiet. I find it difficult to be, you know, talking so much on an interview. They are, they are frightening for me because I'll have to come and face somebody. I don't know what will be asked. I don't know whether I will be able to give an adequate reply. Uh, these are some of the fears that I have. And I would rather just be quiet and 